Okay, so uh, today I'm going to be showing you a very, very cool uh, mentalism uh, type card trick. This is kind of like, um, you know, you can read the future, you can know the future, you can see what's going on. So this is pretty, pretty simple. Um, and it's very easy, actually. It's, you can do this with any, you know, a household object. So let's say you're at like a party or something, you got three random objects laying around, you can actually do this trick. Granted that you have a piece of paper and a pen or something like that. But um, for the sake of this channel, I'm just going to be using cards because it's pretty easy. But anyways, to start it off, let's say I show you, I have a quick prediction right here. I'll leave that onto the screen so you guys can see I'm not, you know, touching it or anything. But essentially, you can take three random objects. In this case, I have these cards here. You can mix these up. And at this point, what I'm going to do is kind of show you a bootleg performance here, only because I'm, I'm only one person. But um, for the best of my abilities, I'm going to try and make it look like there's two people. So what I would do, if I was performing the trick, I would tell somebody else to go ahead and take, you know, each one of their index fingers and put those onto two cards, right? So in this case, uh, let's just say the spectator went like this. Okay, so they took the two index fingers and they put it here. At this point, I would say, all right, go ahead and lift up on one of your fingers, right? So let's say we lift it up here. I would say, okay, go ahead and push the uh, three hearts then to the side. I'll leave that on the table over here. And then this was the other card that you uh, had your finger on. So if you want, you can go ahead and take that card. So let's say you're sitting over here as a spectator and then this would be my card, right? So at this point, we have our cards selected here. And what I would say, okay, so you know, you have the Jack of Diamonds and I have, you know, the leftover the Nine of Clubs here. Now at this point, would you want to go ahead and switch the cards? So let's say the spectator says yes. Let's say they want to go ahead and switch the cards with me. I say, okay, so here's what we're left with. We have the Jack of Diamonds in my hand. You have your the Nine of Clubs and the three of hearts over here. So here would be my prediction. I would pick up my prediction and I would show it to you guys. I would say, look, so I wrote down here, I'm holding the Jack of Diamonds, you're holding the Nine of Clubs, and on the table off to the side here is the Three of Hearts. And excuse my bad handwriting, but you guys can read this for yourselves. And then um, this is it. I'll show you guys how to uh, how to do it. All right, so the cool part is there really isn't any preparation other than just actually just writing this down. So let's say you, you have your phone or something, and like I said, you're at like a party and you're not really carrying pens and paper. You can just write this in your notes. If you want, you can go to your notes app and write this down. But essentially what you do is you take out three random objects from around the house, or in this case, three random cards. And you can just put, okay, so from the three random cards, you just write down, you know, I'm holding the Jack of Diamonds, I'm holding, or you're holding. So it goes in this order. You write down like this. And the, the, the diction choice is very, very important. So you say, I'm holding the Jack of Diamonds. It doesn't matter which one you're holding necessarily. It just matters that it goes in this order. I'm holding, you're holding, and then on the table. And then, like I said, you can pick and choose whichever object you want. Um, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't really matter. So, in this case, this is my setup. Um, just make sure you're saying, I'm holding, you're holding, and then on the table. That's it, in that order. And then from there, it doesn't really matter. So, let's say we have this prediction. You show this to the spectators, say, okay, so look, I do have something written down. Don't look at it yet. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to change anything. You do see it there on the table. So, at this point, what you do is, you know, it doesn't matter if these cards are mixed up, but you kind of start the trick in reverse, and I'll show you what that means in a second. All right, so for whatever card or whatever object you chose to lay on the table, that's kind of where you start the trick off first. And I'll give you a couple different scenarios so you know what to do uh, when the time comes. So in this case, let's say the cards are in this order, right? So you know in your prediction you made the three of hearts, that's gonna be staying on the table. So no matter what, you kind of just do a magician's force and you kind of you know leave that card on the table. So I'll start off here. This would be the easiest route to do, I would say, probably. Um, let's say the spectator does this with their hands, okay? So they don't touch the three of hearts. What happens is you say, okay, so go ahead, leave your two fingers on the table, and you say, okay, so these are two cards you selected. Let's go ahead and get rid of the three for now then. So that's pretty simple. Um, if they put their two cards here, you can just kind of brush the three off, just like that, no big, no big deal. Uh, the next thing you do, let's say they were to, okay, so now it doesn't really matter. They can go like this, they can go like that, whatever it is, the pattern is going to be the same. So in this case, let's say they were to do this, or you know, let's say they did this, okay? Like I said, it doesn't matter. Um, what matters is, is which fingers they actually pick up. So in this case, let's say they were to lift up on, you say, okay, so go ahead, touch two cards. Now, all right, now go ahead and lift up one finger. Now, if they lifted up the finger with the three on it, you kind of just brush it off. You say, okay, so let's just go ahead and get rid of that one then. So it's pretty simple. So let's just, it looks like they've chosen the nine of clubs, right? So when they lift this off, it's very simple just to say, okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of the three then. And that's pretty simple. Um, now let's say they were to hold their fingers on the, uh, 
the three itself. You say, okay, so you lift it up. Now go ahead and just push that one off to the side. So that one's a little bit more forceful. It seems like it's more like a coercive type movement instead of, you know, it looks like they, at this point, they lifted up their finger. It looks like, you know, they've chosen the three, but in reality, what you do is you kind of just force them. You say, all right, so just go and push that one to the side. So, like I said, um, it doesn't really matter. You can, it doesn't matter how they do like this, that, the object is the same. If they do it like this, this is the easiest. So let's say, for example, you've now gotten rid of the three. All right, so at this point, what you're left with are the two cards um, with on the prediction you put, I am holding, you're holding, these are the two cards that are left. So from here, this part is, is, is even more simple to be honest with you. So at this point, let's say, for example, you know, they did this, they pushed the card away and they left their finger on the nine or, you know, whatever. Um, you start, so you, you tell Spectre, go ahead and take your card then. Okay, that's the other card you touched. And then four, you know, this is the one that's kind of been left alone. This will be mine. So at this point, this is very, very simple. Um, and this is why the pattern um, or the diction choice on here is very, very important, uh, important because what happens is you're holding the card. Okay, you're holding one card and they're holding this card. So at this point, you just kind of have to remember what you wrote on the card so you, in the, or on the note. So here you wrote, I'm holding the jack of diamonds. So if you're holding, physically you as the you know magician, whatever, as if you're holding the jack of diamonds, then you say, all right, look, I'm gonna show you my prediction. And then you read it as I'm holding the jack of diamonds. So you don't write the person's name, you just write like pronouns. I'm holding the jack of diamonds. In this case, as the magician, you are. So let's say you look at your spectator, okay. Um, let's say, do you wanna switch these cards out? Let's say they say yes. So now they give you the card they picked. They have the jack of diamonds. At this point, like I said, you do have to remember who's holding which card. So if they're holding the Jack of Diamonds, you have to remember that. You say, all right, so go ahead and read the prediction out loud. So at this point, they're going to read the prediction out loud as themselves, and they'll say, I'm holding the Jack of Diamonds, you're holding the Nine of Clubs, and the three is on the table. So that's pretty much the only thing you've got to do. Just remember what you wrote first as the I'm holding, and then... Um, you know, like I said, if they are holding the Jack of Diamonds, then you give them, and you say, okay, go ahead and make sure you read this out loud. And, you know, like I said, guys, it's super, super simple. It's just a lot of magicians forcing, but um, it's like, it's, it's impromptu. You can do it anywhere, especially at a party. This will be really, really cool. So I hope you guys liked the video, and as always, thanks for watching. Hillary Carford, she's a literal vampire, a belly goblin, hobbling, bouncing after your